Welcome to TNC Radio Live. We are live on a Thursday night, and this is in for the long haul with Candace and Angie and Lisa. Well, good evening, everyone. I am Lisa, and I'm here with my beautiful co-hosts tonight, <laughs> Angie and Candace, who I love dearly, even though they're kind of mad at me. But we'll get into that later. So we have a special guest Woo-hoo. tonight, and her name is Pat Hayes. And I am going to let her tell you a little bit about herself. Well, I've been a nurse for 46 years, so I'm old. And uh, (laughs) I've had a lot. Well, I haven't had a lot of jobs. I've had like five jobs maybe in my life. And the longest one was 30 years at the hospital here in town. And uh, I've just enjoyed every minute of it. Thinking about retiring, though. 46 years. Wow. Yeah. Candace, does that make you feel like a toddler? I mean, I have to say she's been a nurse longer than I've been alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are here talking about health of the trucker in the truck. So we have some questions for you, Miss Patricia Hayes. Okay. And the first one we are going to ask you is, a lot of female drivers suffer from UTIs from not having bathroom access. What are some good things they should do to prevent UTIs? Well, females, notoriously, that is a problem of having UTIs. Um, So they actually, they need to hydrate really, really well um, throughout the day. And they need to go to the bathroom more frequently than you think, just to flush out your system. Um, uh, Also, they they can take, if they have a, some women have a, just a natural ability to be like a, a, a yeast infection or whatever all the time. And so they can take some over-the-counter stuff that will make it dull the, the, how they have a feeling if it's um, like not a bladder infection, but they think it is like they have the urgency to go. But mainly they need to drink water. And I know that's hard for a lot of people, but there's all kinds of water anymore that if you could all kinds of flavors. Um, Really, and the best thing is they just need to go to the bathroom bathroom often. And I know that's not ideal, but they do. And then for high, uh, they need to good use good hygiene. And that would be from front to back when you're wiping. And, and if you think you have an infection, then you really need to go in and have a provider look at you and see if you do or not and get it treated. Now, what are some stuff they can buy at the store? I know I carry Azo pills. Yep. Um, and there's several brand names or off brand from that. I know Dollar General has a pretty good one. And it has an anesthetic in it that you you won't feel your urine. So, um, and, the, the, and you can drink cranberry juice and that type of thing. That helps clean out your system. Um, and the cranberry, the Azo is cranberry tablets, is made out of cranberry. So, and that's some of the things that I've over the years, or they used to use a, it's a, you have to get a prescription for it, but it's called pyridium. That kind of has the same analgesic effect, except it turns your urine blue. blue. Have you guys ever had your urine blue? Am I a smurf? <laughs> no. no, I ended I up orange. <laughs> I was going to say, I had to take Azo one time and it turned orange, but not blue. Yeah. Okay. Pyridium. Yeah. Pyridium is you get it over the or you have to have a doctor's prescription. Blue. Mm-hmm. What else do you ladies need uh, want to ask about this subject? Well, so as a I truck driver, gonna, I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh. I say as a go truck ahead. driver, I think the hardest part for me is just you know there's some days where I may drive my full eight hours before I actually take a break because we're like in a tight schedule, and so it's usually those times you know where. I'm going two or three days where I'm, you know, driving my max before I ever take a break. And then I'll start to notice, uh uh-oh, it's time to go grab the A's. And sometimes it helps, and you know, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So, But it's a common thing among female truckers. Right. Yeah. And that's because it's, you're, as it's sedentary, you know, you're, you're sitting and you're 
probably not drinking because you don't want to have to stop and go to the bathroom. So it's a catch 22, but you really need to stay hydrated and stop maybe even if it's every five hours. I mean, at least get in the routine to do that. I know it's not um, ideal, but it's something you should do for your own health. Candace, did you have a question? No, I was going to say, um, you know, when I first got in the truck with my other half, um, I, I had them because I wasn't used to holding my bladder that long. Um, and I started getting the little cranberry pills, the like vitamins. And I noticed Uh they cut back drastically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have got another question here. We'll go on to the next one before we take a break. So we'll ask one more question here. Two, heart disease and diabetes are top concerns for truckers. What are some things that we can do to reduce our risk? Um, Not be a trucker. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because truckers have the worst of kind of both worlds. They don't eat, uh, you know, good healthy diet. Usually they eat fast food and it's fatty food. And, um, and then the, the diabetes, you know, you, they end up eating things that are full of sugar and, and they gain weight and weight is another big bugaboo. So um, things that they can do to release or help that as I think take some of their own food um, and be, you know, like, take fruits, vegetables on the road that you can, you know, eat in between. So it's not so fatty all the time. Um, when you stop to eat, make a healthier choice if you can. So a lot of places have salads and that kind of thing. Um, and I know, you know, most people know they're going to eat something fatty or whatever and try to get out and walk when you're out of the truck, walk a little distance, increase it each time you get out. Um, some people take a baby aspirin every day. That does help some. Um, but you have so many other problems when you're sitting in that truck. It's the sedentary lifestyle that actually is getting you. It's not the heart disease or the diabetes. It's sitting there with your legs bent and your um, like socks that are tight and jeans that are tight around your abdomen and those kinds of things. So um, they can... Uh, go to a doctor and see if they have any issues with their labs and that, and the doctor can actually provide you things to help with your labs and your, if you do have high sugars and whatnot. Um, the food diet is extremely important. Exercise is extremely important. Drinking lots of water is extremely important. Um, and if you do feel like you have are having chest pain, back pain in the middle of your back, then you do need to go find medical attention quickly ladies so um i guess i would i would say i know um there are certain fruits that are good for um for you but they're also bad for you if you're a diabetic can you yeah. um like kind of point out some of those sure us? um i'm hearing um just a second here. I know bananas are not the healthiest to, for a diabetic. I mean, you can have like a half a banana, but not more than that because it's like full of sugar. And I love bananas. Yeah, I know. A lot, many people do. And well, all banana or all fruit has somewhat sugar in it, but you want to find like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries are pretty good. Uh, kiwis pretty good. Um, apples, of course, um, oranges, uh, grapefruit, not so much. Um, what other kind of fruit? Peaches. I eat peaches, just lots of them when it, they're in season. I don't like them other than that. Um, and, and you of, can eat. And of course, <laughs> the fresh is better than the ones that sit in the juice too. Yes, and in, and actually, my mom used to. Well, my dad was diabetic, so she would take the fruit that was in the heavy syrup and she would rinse it in the sink. So it was just the fruit and it washed a lot of the sugary stuff off, you know. Now I bought that for Scott before the peaches and the light syrup and he turns his nose up at it. I think it's just because he sees it because I don't see any difference in it. I mean, to me, it tastes the same. Yeah, if I buy the light syrup, he's like, uh, no, no, thank you, ma'am. I And I, yeah, I think it's just a, 
in their head. They're crazy. That's what it is. Because <laughs> I know, like, when we go into the truck stop, like, they have, you know, the little cups of fresh fruit. And it's like, what is it, Angie? Like, um, the little cuties and pineapple, pineapple. and watermelon. Cantaloupe. Yep. cantaloupe. Yep, those are good. Those are good. Especially, and, you know, the only problem with those is it's just only when they're in season. Other than maybe the truck yeah, stops sure. have uh, bags that are frozen, but, and they're not bad. Um, well, grapes are, you know, not uh, like two cups of grapes, but a half a cup to a cup of grapes would not be bad. I usually stick them in the freezer and then I take them out as a snack. Frozen grape pops. I never thought of that. I didn't think of that either. Yeah. Um, pears. I love fresh pears. I don't like canned pears, but I love fresh pears. Um, mm-hmm. And like carrots and apples and celery, um, cucumber. I love cucumber. Um, yes. Lemon. What's really bad for you? What's fruit that's really bad for you? Um, b- banana is probably the worst for you because it's, but usually they always say everything in moderation. You know? Um, yeah. I know. Well, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are coming back with Pat Hayes, a registered nurse for 46 years, and we are into the long haul, Candace, Lisa, and Angie. See you shortly. This info blog on tncradio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Spring is near. Cleaning tips for truck drivers. Spring's right around the corner. That means saying goodbye to the cold winter weather and hello to the warm sunshine. For many people, it's time to start spring cleaning at their house. For truckers, this could mean cleaning out their truck. It's not uncommon for truck drivers to spend more time on the road than in their house. Having a clean, organized truck can make life on the road much more enjoyable and less stressful. Here's some spring cleaning tips for truck drivers. Clean and organize. It's always a good idea to incorporate a cleaning routine into your work schedule. After all, your truck reflects who you are as a driver. A clean and well-organized truck can take a lot of stress out of your job as being a truck driver. It also makes you more prepared in the event of a DOT inspection. Take some time this spring to clean out and organize your truck. Throw away the trash. Donate or get rid of things that are not a part of your daily use. Go through your paperwork and organize it. Finally, wipe down the inside of your truck. Get a wet cloth and wipe down your dash, air vents, and other areas you feel need cleaning. After you wipe everything down, pull out your vacuum and start vacuuming the carpet's floor mats and vents. Wash and wax. The winter months can be hard on the exterior of a truck. All the snow and de-icing salts can make your truck look pretty rough. Start washing your truck from the top and work your way down. Use microfiber cloths to clean your windows and windshields. Maintenance. Failing to stay up to date on your truck's maintenance means you're less likely to spot a problem before it occurs. This can end up costing you a lot of money and time off from work. Not only do you save money and time by regularly performing maintenance on your truck, but you're also more likely to pass a roadside inspection. The spring season is a great time to perform a maintenance check on your truck. Check fluid levels and make sure your lights and windshield wipers are working. Snow and ice take a toll on brakes and tires. The transition from cold to warm weather can affect your tire pressure. Check your brakes and make sure they're not worn out. Be sure to check out the blog, Six Easy Steps for Keeping Your Semi-Truck Interior Clean, from the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF is boosting the image of the industry by telling the story of trucking. And your story can be part of it. Upload a photo, tell us what you love about trucking, or send us a story about a good deed or charitable act in trucking. Be sure to follow us on social media and contact us through truckingmovesamerica.com. That's truckingmovesamerica.com. This is TNC Radio. Live. And welcome back in TNC Radio Live, in for the long haul. Well, welcome back. You have my Lisa, Candace, and Angie, and our special guest today, Patricia Hayes, a forty-six year registered nurse, and we are picking her brain about some stuff in the truck that helps and doesn't help. So, I have the next question we wanted to ask her 
What is the best practice to reduce blood clots? Well, that's an interesting one. First of all, you don't want to have any type of um, like atrial fibrillation or high blood pressure is bad. But if you're wearing constrictive clothing, whether it be shoes, socks, um, jeans, like around your waist, around your neck, that's all you should really have loose fitting clothing because that all, all that constriction, especially because you're sitting there and your blood's kind of staying in the same area and that's how you de- develop clots. So what you're saying is drive naked. Is that, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so what about like getting up and moving? And I mean, does that help too? It does. And you should probably get and like have a schedule and put it in your day of getting up and moving around and whatnot. I had a friend that she wasn't a trucker, but she had had a surgery two or three weeks and she went out to Colorado and back and she died when she got back. She had had a blood clot in her leg and it went to her heart. And, and mm. she just sat in that car for like however long it takes you to get out there. Mm. So you just have to really take care of yourself when you need, you really need to think on it, but you need to get out and do either exercises or walking or running. So would the buttoning up the jeans is that I know Scott, like my husband has an umbilical hernia Uh and he finds it worse if he leaves his jeans buttoned because it presses on his hernia and it, it makes it worse. Is that, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, either have baggier clothes or because yeah, that <clears throat> that's restricting all that in there. And that hernia eventually, if it gets big enough, will strangulate, and then it'll be an emergent situation. Because I don't know, you know, some of these dry, like Angie, you're sitting behind that wheel for eight hours straight. Yeah, yeah, I, the, we <laughs> we try really hard not to have days like that, mainly because. And that's one of the benefits I've always tried to tell truckers, get a small dog because a dog's going to require you to have to, you know, get out of your truck and go for a walk. Although I have seen some truckers just open the door and let the dog out and then not get out of the truck. But for the most part, it forces you to have to stop every couple hours to get out, take your dog for a walk. And so, you know, that's usually our excuse to get out of the truck. And so I always try to encourage truckers. You know, get a small animal, somebody that's depending on you, that's depending on you to take them out. Cause it's going to force you to get out of that truck and do some walking. Yeah, exactly. And I would say, too, before you get in the truck in the morning or and at, when you get out at night, if you take walks at those times, that would help some if you're going to be driving for eight hours. So, uh, Candace, do you have anything to add? Um, I was just going to ask, what is, what would you say is probably the safe drive to time to exercise to get back into drive like the how should you schedule that for exercise in your driving day you mean yes yes yeah. um well i would certainly do something before you start and many you know many people go like to the gym or whatever in the morning but i would say a nice walk even if it's just a couple of blocks will get you kind of stimulated and then stretching stretch good before you get in the truck that'll help you um and then if you stop to eat somewhere you know take a little time to walk around that area and then if you need to get get out and go to the bathroom i'd do a little bit then because you can do exercises even in the truck as far as like you know leg lifts and that kind of thing i mean if you have enough room in there you can lift your legs up maybe not real far but i mean you can do enough to make it tighten your muscles or whatever well, yeah. we all, Scott always parks, he always parks at the back of a lot. And I always kind of yeah. give him that little grunt and grumble when he parks at the back of the lot. But he does it so we have that walk up to the truck stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we I have a thing. Go ahead, Ange. I'll say we, we do the same thing. No matter where we go, we always try to park in the very back because, you know, any little bit of walking we can get in is. You know, it helps us. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I feel like with, you know, getting out every so often, especially for females, if you, you know, you drive for a little bit, get out, stretch, that's a good time to go to the bathroom. So you're not holding that bladder. So it could all, you know, work together. It all works together. Yep. Yep. So I know this. 
Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I had a question. So Larry and I recently got into flat bedding and, uh, excuse me, where flat bedding is different than a lot of other um, trekking is that, you know, you're exposed to the elements, whether it's cold, hot, or whatever, because you're having to secure that load. And right now, with it being summertime and it being so hot, you know, what are your recommendations for trying to stay hydrated, especially when we're out here working in the sun? You know, I know Gator is a good option. Is there any other ones that you could maybe recommend? Um I would say Gatorade is probably one of the better options and just water. Um, and then if you're going to be out in the heat and you're going to be drinking, I wouldn't drink ice cold stuff. I would drink more lukewarm, not lukewarm, but just regular temperature water, like out of the tap. Because it stresses your heart if you're drinking anything too cold. That's what somebody told me, and I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. They said just drink it when it's, you know, lukewarm, like straight out of the bottle and not real cold. Yeah. Because why – now, why is that important? I know you just said, but – Well, it constricts vessels in your body, and it's not good for you. And that's like even if you are hot and you want to cool down, don't, like, pour really cold water over you because that will make you sicker than – Oh. Just take, like, lukewarm water and – Pour it on yourself. So there you go, Angie. And, no cold showers. And cool cool down slowly. Because heat that stroke makes sense. is a bad thing. Yeah. Well, that would make sense. I, I guess I usually, the first thing I do, like, after I'm mowing the yard or something, is I want to come in and drink an ice cold glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is a really a big thing for truck drivers, this next question. Because I know we all suffer for it, especially Scott. A lot of us rely on caffeine to keep us alert. Is there a better alternative? Now, I know Scott can drink like a case of Dr. Pepper a week. Now, what is a better alternative to keep yourself alert than caffeine? That's about the best thing that there is, or getting plenty of sleep. Um, but it, but the pop thing isn't good for you either, you know? Um, so... I always, like, I drink a lot of green tea, and I always, and I, I can drink iced green tea or green tea, and it doesn't have any caffeine in it, or something without caffeine. I mean, you know, decaffeinated coffee instead of drinking regular coffee. Oh, we don't need that negativity in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pat. But I, I'm, I, I'm a bad one because I drink coffee almost all day, so I'm not a good one at that. So how does too much caffeine affect? Your body. Oh, it's bad on your heart and your vessels and your just about everything in your body. It's it's not good for it. So basically, everything ties in together yeah, into one. So yeah. what you eat, what you do, how much you walk, it all comes back to your body. Yeah, it all comes back to your body and how you treat your body is how you're going to um, be able to withstand trucking on, you know, for years. I mean... Because it is, and it's like your back. Your back is bad for sitting there, you know, and then your legs get bad because you're sitting there. And, it, yeah, it's just an all around. So, ladies, do you have anything? We have just about two minutes left. Do you ladies have anything before we take a break and come back to some more questions? I was just going to say, um, I know that my dad's listening, and he heard that, you know, coffee's not good for your heart and he's had a heart attack and he still gets up and drinks coffee and it's straight black coffee like I've never seen anyone drink black coffee the way he does but he will drink on it and it can be scolding hot outside and he is drinking black coffee well that makes him <laughs> it makes him cool and I, it, it sounds crazy but it does it makes it makes him feel cool by drinking that hot coffee seriously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep I wouldn't give up coffee either. I'm with him. <laughs> so it makes it makes you cool if you drink. Yeah. I mean, it'll cool you down by drinking hot coffee. See, now I did not know that. That is something I did well, not know. It's along with the hydration, you know. I mean, you're just, you're putting fluid in your body, you know. I know, but it would seem that hot would make, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a nurse. You- you would think hot would make you hot. <laughs> yeah, I would think. I would think that hot coffee would make you hot. No, it doesn't. All right. Well, you are here with Lisa Candace and Angie and Patricia Hayes, a registered nurse for 46 years. 
We are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we have a few more questions for Pat. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. A gentleman in his 80s was talking to me about a procedure in his life that he was uncertain about. And I commented by saying, you know, I've known you long enough to say that whatever happens, you'll be okay. You'll land on your feet. You'll be buoyant. I feel like I have the right to say that because I've known you for a few years and you bounce back from things. He stopped for a moment and he said, you know, I really appreciate you saying that. I think it's probably true, but just hearing that come from you, well, I appreciate the encouragement. Do you encourage one another? You know, we have Bible verses that talk about encouragement. We have lessons from Buddha that talk about encouraging people one to another. Well, we also have psychological research. You know, there's a psychologist named Wong out of Indiana University who wrote about encouragement and, and studied, you know, when encouragement and how encouragement makes a difference in the lives of others. So here's three things that we can glean from how to effectively encourage one another. First of all, it should be commensurate with what's happening. It shouldn't be, you know, you have the ability to go to Harvard if they're just scraping by. You know, you, you, you keep it specific to what they're capable of accomplishing. Secondly, it has to be from someone who's deemed to be trustworthy. And thirdly, keep it focused on their accomplishments. Stay positive. Say you've, you've finished 70% of the assignment. I know you could do the rest of it. According to the research, these things make a difference. But always continue to be positive and encourage one another because humans respond very well to that. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to TNC Radio Live. This is In for the Long Haul. Well, welcome back. You are in for the long haul with Lisa, Candace, and Angie. And we have a very good friend of mine here tonight, Patricia Hayes, who has been a registered nurse for 46 years. And we are asking her some questions tonight. And I wanted to touch base on this question. Depression affects a lot of drivers on the road. And the FMCSA frowns upon medication to treat depression. Do you have a possible natural solution to help depression besides divorcing our husbands and working at the 7-Eleven? Because that will not work. <laughs> I know. Well, there are a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, new medications out there for depression. But 
they have to have somebody to talk to. I mean, that's the essential. Anybody with depression has to have somebody to talk to to get through their their issues or whatever. And so um, I would say that's foremost. Is have, and they can talk to people while they're going down the road. I mean, as far as that goes, if you have a good friend, just visit with them. And, um, but if you're in a really massive depression cycle, then you need to really go get help. Now, the FMCSA, did you look to see if there's any medications that you... There is not. Well, there is not, really. But Okay, if, here we go. From a 46 registered <laughs> nurse, she's going to tell you this question. We get asked a lot this question. Yeah, but the thing that you have to do is if you're taking something, you have to write it down on that back page. And, and that, that may not that they're going to do anything to you, but you have to tell them know what you are taking. So there is not a medication that legally says you cannot drive a truck if you're on this medication. Mm -mm. Well, there you have it, folks. We get a we get asked this a lot of times. Ladies, do you have anything to add? Well, unless you're talking alcohol or well, yes, alcohol or drugs. Yeah, I mean, I'm not yeah. gonna be snorting yeah. meth and pounding forties yeah. going down the highway. <laughs> well, I, but I think that's the biggest misconception because I I can tell you personally that I know off the top of my head at least ten truck drivers that have been very hesitant to seek um, getting on medication, even though they know that they should be taken or maybe they mm -hmm. were formally prescribed medication because they've been told by their employers that if you pop positive for, um, you know, antidepressants that you could lose your job. And I think that's, which I think is awful. And it's, I think that so many people think that. Yeah, that is terrible. Yeah. But all you have to do is write on that back page when you do your drug screen or whatever, mm -hmm. that you take that medication and, that should take care of it. Okay. See, that was a big one because, it, like Angie had just said, we have had a lot of drivers come into our lives before and say, oh, my gosh, don't don't talk to anyone. Don't take this medication. Don't take that medication because it will make you not be able to get your CDL. And that's a very hot subject with truck drivers right now, isn't it, ladies? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely, because, I mean, let's be honest, if I was someone working at the FMCSA, you know, I think I would prefer to have my truck driver who maybe is having a small bout of depression that maybe needs a small medication to help them feel better and cope than to be unmedicated. And then, you know, maybe something drastic happens down the way. It just seems to me the smarter decision is to allow truckers to seek mental health and to get help for that. So yeah, that's what absolutely. always confused me. Yeah, I agree. I, there's nothing wrong with getting treated for something. I mean. No, and I think a lot of them are kind of in a situation, you know, okay, I know I have depression, but if I go get help, I'm either weak or I can't provide for my family. And neither of those are true. Right. So I think That's them knowing that is, is a is crucial. Great. Yep, absolutely. So. I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure we got to that question. Um, we have a couple more questions, Pat. Okay. One of the questions is, are there vitamins or supplements that you would recommend? Um, there's a couple things that I think anyone should take. Isn't that a, uh, multiple, multiple vitamin? I think everyone should take one every day and that kind of gives you an overall good thing for your body and then i actually take i don't think people eat enough protein and so i take a like a protein shake thing oh i love uh, those and i mean yeah oh yeah and they have like 30 grams of protein because i'm not a meat eater <laughs> so i love that but that's about it i mean there's a lot of supplements you can take but i don't know i, I would just some of them some people lie to you on those packages and say it's going to help you or whatever but I don't think that's true. <laughs> so can you over supplement? Can you, you take you too can. many things? Yeah. yeah, and it works against everything else. So, yeah, I wouldn't. If Unless your doctor says you can, I would not take a lot of supplements. So you would just keep it simple. Right. And I wouldn't take, you know, a lot of people drink those um, high energy drinks. Five hour energies? Yeah. Uh, Candace. That is I don't terrible. Drink, no, no. <laughs> I don't drink five hour energies. Okay. No. She drinks those monsters. Oh wow, well, that monster you, you, coffee! You should have you should have seen her face. She just made right now. Tell her, Pat. <laughs> that, that's bad. That stuff is bad. It's not good for your body at all, <laughs> especially your heart. 
Larry's going to see it too. Yeah. So the monster drinks yeah. are bad. And then those little five hour energy drinks, the yeah. little pack, are there just the little things? Those are really bad for you also. Yes. I wouldn't take any of that kind of stuff. Now I, I need to touch base with this. So those monster drinks, ah, Candace are really bad for you. Uh-huh. Right. Yes. Candace has brain cancer. She should not be drinking those, should she? That is true. Candace, yep. listen. Yep. I drink the coffee one, though. <laughs> I, just got I don't think coffee. that really makes much difference. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Well, hey, Bear. How are you? I am, I am very well. How are y'all tonight? We are just having a little conversation with my neighbor. She's been a registered nurse for 46 years. And she is giving us a little information on your health on the road. Right. I've been listening for a few minutes. We were just scolding Candace for drinking those energy drinks, the monsters. (laughs) Um, Well, then, Candace, Candace, you and I are in the same corner here, okay? We'll come out fighting (laughs) together. All right. (laughs) Pat, listen. Tell them how bad it is. It's bad. It is bad for you. What does it do to your heart? It increases your heart rate. It increases your blood pressure. And it's it's not good for your diet. It's there's just nothing in it that's good for you. So who are you going to trust? Bear and Candace are a 46 year registered nurse. <laughs> Bear and Candace, I'm sorry. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I know it's bad, but you know. <clears throat> I tell you, things were so very very different a long time ago. You know, before the five hour energy drinks, and I, and. And I don't disagree. The five hour, the the five hour energies, the monsters, uh, the you know those. I don't know all the names of them. There's so many out here because they're they're so popular. You know, I, I know they're not good. There's no question about that. I'm not going to argue that. But it's a lot better than what was what people did. And I'm not talking about narcotics. But what drivers did to stay awake back 35 years ago. Like them yellow jackets? Was, yeah, those no. are yeah. What no, were those little told, white not, things called? Mini I'm, thins. Yeah, mini thins, which, I mean, don't get me started on mini thins and I the dangers thereof. Yeah, but, but and you could buy before, them. Yeah, you could buy them over the counter, couldn't you, Pat? And you what could. does that do to your heart? Oh, that, that well, even before, well. even before the mini thins, one of the most popular things, and and I I freely admit now I've never used any type of illegal drug ever in my life, but back then, of course, everybody ran paper logs, and it was it, if you didn't run a 800 or a thousand miles a day, you couldn't, you couldn't afford to, you couldn't afford to pay your rent. So what was very popular back then was, was Mountain Dew and BC powder, BC powders, the headache powders and the goodies didn't work. It had to be BC. The BC powders had 64 milligrams of caffeine Mm-hmm. in each powder. And so you take 10 of them and down yeah. it with a Mountain Dew. You should have <laughs> just seen Pat's face when you said that bear. She gave me that deer in the headlight look like I am going oh, uh, to hunt that man down and oh, teach well, him. I, mean, I, I don't, I mean, n- nobody with, with a brain would do that now. But... That's what. That's how you stayed awake. So I think well, the monsters are a better alternative. Yeah. Well, and times are different better, now too. Yeah. I think the best alternative is a motto that I learned. Of obviously not early enough, but a motto that I learned early, early on, which is if they want that load there at ten a.m. Tuesday morning, they will just want it a little bit more at 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. Pull over, take a nap. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Well, we, oh, no, I guess we still have a minute left. A minute. Oh, I think I wasn't even looking at that. I was having a score moment. I'm sorry. No, I gave you a minute. Oh, you gave me a minute. See, look at that. Tom giving me things. Thank you, Tom. Um, So we were talking about vitamins and 
uh, we were talking to Pat about over supplementing. If you take too many vitamins, it's bad for your body also. Mm -hmm. And Pat had said, leave it simple. Yes. Like, so like a one a day. Yep. Multiple, multiple vitamin. And this is whatever works for you. You know, I get the centrum because I'm old now, <laughs> but you know, they're all, they're all about the same, but right. All right, well, we've got a few more questions for Pat, so we are going to take a quick commercial break. You are here with Lisa, Candace, and Angie, and we are in for the long haul. We are and also... And I was getting to that, Angie. <laughs> and Bear, who will have a radio show right after ours, Bear the Voice. And when we come back, we have a few more questions from our lovely Patricia Hayes, registered nurse. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. The dark side of the long-haul trucker lifestyle. A trucker's lifestyle can be a gloomy place at times. Long days, stressful work environments, and loneliness have major effects on a driver's life. The dark side of the long-haul trucker's lifestyle is often overlooked and not addressed. As a result, many drivers suffer from mental and physical health problems. Before entering the trucking industry, long-haul truck drivers need to be aware of the good and bad that comes with this lifestyle. It's difficult to stay healthy. Being in good health is a rare thing for long-haul truck drivers. Life on the road doesn't give drivers many opportunities to live a healthy lifestyle. When you spend the majority of your trucking career on the go, your food options are limited. Although taking an exit to get McDonald's may seem like an easy solution or the easiest option, eating fast food for every meal for weeks at a time can cause serious health issues. Obesity is one of the most common health issues in truckers. If you don't watch your diet and exercise, you could end up developing a serious health problem. Say goodbye to a regular sleep schedule. The trucking industry runs 24-7, 365, so having a regular sleep schedule is rare for long-haul drivers. The loading and unloading times are often never the same. At times, the driver will deliver a load at 2 a.m. one day and 1 p.m. the next day. In addition to the inconsistent load times, drivers can make multiple deliveries a day. This creates a lot of stress on the body and leaves the driver operating on a few hours of sleep. If you're struggling with getting enough sleep and staying awake on the road, check out our blog, Five Easy Steps to Help Truckers Stay Awake While Driving. You'll feel lonely. It's not uncommon for long-haul truck drivers to feel lonely while on the road. Drivers have very little face-to-face -face interactions while working on the road. While this may seem like a good thing for some drivers, it can start to develop depressive symptoms. Depression is a common side effect of trucking. To help avoid feeling depressed on the road, talk to your friends and family on the phone at least once a day. As a long-haul truck driver, you can often feel like you're missing out on your loved one's life. Communicating with them daily will help you feel less lonely. It's hard on your relationships. Long-haul trucking can strain your relationship with your significant other. Being away from your loved one for weeks at a time is never easy. In addition to being apart, many drivers struggle with balancing their work life and personal life. Relationships already take a lot of work, but long-distance relationships take even more work. When you become a long-haul truck driver, it's important to be willing to put an extra effort into your relationship. Some quick tips to having a healthy relationship as a long-haul truck driver. Communicate daily. Spend as much time together as possible when you're not working. Consider therapy. Avoid arguments. Trust each other. This blog has been brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNCradio.live your commercial driver navigation station. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. Remember to tune into the Truckers Network Show with Shelley Johnson weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back in TNC Radio Live. This is in for the long haul. Well, welcome back, my little munchkins. We have got Lisa, Candace, and Angie. We are in for the long haul. We have a special guest, Patricia Hayes, who has been a registered nurse for forty-six years, and we also have another special guest, Bear the Voice, 
who will be having the show directly after our show. And I think, uh, real quick, though, before I ask Pat a question, is it Bears, Hacks? I just saw it, but, you know, I'm having a squirrel moment. Is it Bear what? Trucker Life Hacks with Bears Trucker Life Life Hacks. Yeah, Trucker Life Hacks. All right. So, Pat, we've got one more question for you we want to ask you tonight. We want to talk to you a little bit about healthy food is not always easy to find on the road or that it's even affordable. So do you have any recommendations on healthy foods, like from fast food places or even at the Casey's or or something? Yeah, most of those places, well, maybe not Casey's, but have some kind of um, salad alternative or like Subway, you know, has all their vegetables and their, I like their salad, actually. And then um, mo- most of the fast foods have a, some kind of salad that you can get and then put meat on it or whatever. Um and if, if, you know, it's just once in a while, the Casey's pizza isn't all that horrible, you know. I don't like Casey's pizza, but that's, that's me. I don't like all the grease on it. So you're but, saying, oh, I was looking at pocket. So you're saying um, not like fast food every day? No, because that's, well, it's a fat thing. I mean, it's lots of fatty and salt and everything like that. So it's just, it's not healthy. Well, we want to, I think, what what did we need for Bear? Three, four minutes? Tom? Uh, yes. What, what yes. yes. Okay. So I want to thank Pat for being here with us because, you know, she's amazing and she's my neighbor and I love her. Um, but we would like to introduce Bear. Now, Bear is going to have the show right after our show. Bear's show is at 8 p.m. Central. And so, Bear, why don't you tell us a little bit about your show in the last couple of minutes we have left? Where to begin? <laughs> it's going to, kind of, it's, to begin with, I'm going to introduce myself on my show and give my background. And as you and I discussed earlier, Lisa, or a day or two ago, you know, I, I started playing this game 37 years ago. But... I actually started playing the game a lot earlier than that. So to begin with, that's what it's going to be about. It's not to not to fish off of Toby Keith, but it's gonna be a little bit a little bit about me, 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 me. Oh Lord, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but there's so many people you <laughs> I just want people to know who I am and understand where I come from in a lot of the things that that we're going to talk about over the duration of of this little endeavor and where some of the, some of the ideas that I have and the things that I've learned, how I've learned them, where I learned them from that sort of thing. That's, that's primarily what this is going to be about. And once we really get into the meat of it, uh, Lisa, it's going to be just like the title says, Life Hacks. So you You said in this little short endeavor, don't you know Tom Kelly is a little bit like the Hotel California? You you can never leave. It's like you're here forever. (laughs) Well, I hope so. I hope so. I really do. But... You know, eventually I'm going to run out of stuff to tell people how to do. Well, that'll so maybe, never happen. Then you don't think? Then we just start no. over, start over at the beginning and do the whole thing again. Nope. I, I can I can dig it, man. I can dig it. But and there's going to be a lot. We were talking just previous about eating healthy, and you've seen my TikToks. I I do a lot of cooking in the truck. And granted, no, I don't cook specifically healthy. I've got a, I've got a friend of mine in mind who we can bring on because he does cook very healthy and he cooks in the truck. But what, what your neighbor, and I apologize. I didn't, I didn't write her name down. It's a uh, Patricia Hayes, Patricia, what Patricia was saying about the fast food places having some healthy alternatives you when you eat it the same thing over and over and over every day 
the monotony of it, you get to the point where you don't want to eat because Subway, you can only eat, even their healthy choices, you can only eat that so many times before you are just so sick of it. So uh, there's going to be a lot about cooking on the road and different ways to cook because you don't have to have all the equipment in the truck that I have. Actually, you don't have to have any. We absolutely look forward to listening to your show, but we have about 30 seconds left. So I want to thank everyone for coming tonight and listening to myself, Lisa, Candace, and Angie at In for the Long Haul. And Angie, where can we find you on your social media? Uh, You can find me on Facebook and TikTok with Married to the Road and also on Facebook with Trita Trucker. And Candace. Did we lose Candace? We may have. But don't forget uh, to join us tomorrow night for our Friday game night on TikTok under 32 truckers a day, 8 p.m. Central. And Tom's going to be there with us. And you can find myself at 32 truckers a day, our spoiled trucker's wife, spoiled squirrel on TikTok, Lisa Schroed on Facebook. And... We are in for the long haul. Our show is every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central. But tonight, I will be staying a little longer because I'm going to listen. I'm going to get off this live, and I'm going to listen to Bear's first show because he told me to call him and critique him. I'm going to do that. Me too. So I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. And Bear, we wish you the most amazing luck on your first show. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and Candace is back. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.